so our third paper is about congestion control in low latency wireless networks. Uh, this is a timely topic given the increased uh, usage of video applications. Uh, so Zili is a, a fourth year PhD student at Tsinghua University. His research interest is real-time video communications. Um, he's on the job market. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Zili from Tsinghua University. And today I'm going to introduce our work to achieve the consistent low latency for the wireless real-time communications with the shortest control loop. So the real-time communications, or RTC, is one of the hot topics in the recent years. As you can see now, we are using video conferencing for work and cloud gaming for entertainment. We also have different like remote surgery and like remote control of the cars and vehicles in different scenarios. Especially for SICOM from last two years, we are held in virtually like via Zoom. So like RTC is really the cutting edge applications now. So an outstanding feature of RTC is that it requires uh, to re optimize the tail latency or what we call here the consistent low latency. This is very important for the cloud gaming video conferencing, these kind of RTC applications. Let's see this example. So if a certain video call session, we have a like, latency, like 99% latency of 200 milliseconds, which is like above that users will start to experience stutters or interaction delays. This actually means that video stutters will happen one second in every 100 milliseconds, like one, two minutes, which is really bad for the user's experience. So here we are just motivated to optimize for the extreme detail of the latency part. So we then want to see like where's really the bottleneck of the, uh, the tail latency. So we collaborated with Alibaba and to measure on the online RTC service in production. And we present the network runship time here. So in this figure, X axis is the network runship time and Y axis is the complementary CDF. So we categorize the measurement results in internet, Wi-Fi and 4G. As we can see here, Actually, the Wi-Fi 4G and internet, or the wireless and wireless comparison, they do not have a very big difference on the medium percentiles. However, the wireless connections are like two orders of magnitude more likely to have a higher RTT in the tail percentiles. And for a real user like Alice using like video conferencing with her teammates, such a high latency will result in the starters. Know that we are measuring with millions of users every day for a week, and the only difference here is the access type of the access network. So there must be something happen on the last access network. So what's really happening here? One of our observations here is that in the wireless last access network, there are rapid bandwidth drops. Let's see this example. If there's an incoming flow to a wireless router, and the thing in wireless different from wired one is that the capacity is also fluctuating due to different like, reasons, like competition with other users in the same physical space, or maybe just interference from other devices, such as microwave. So in this case, we want to see how much is the bandwidth drop here. So let's say if the, before, the bandwidth before is one, how much is the X here going to be like? So we measure the wired connection first. We measure from open data sets and also from our own services. We see that for bandwidth drop, in this figure, the Y axis is the complementary CDF still. So more than 99% of wired connections, the bandwidth drop is actually lower than a half, which is quite stable. But for different scenarios in wireless network, like the restaurant, office, we're using 5G, 4G, 5G, and Wi-Fi, the bandwidth drop, the 99% of bandwidth drop ranging from 1 in 6 or to 1 in 50, so which is much more fluctuating than the wired networks. This actually raises a new challenge for the congestion control algorithms because they need to react to the congestion like sustainability changes. Otherwise, there will be like starters. So let's hear so the rapid bandwidth jobs will result in rapid delay jitters. So we present the whole end-to-end -end data pass here. Like the senders will send packets through the downlink wireless array wireless network to the access point and wide wireless links finally to the receiver. And the receiver accordingly acknowledges the previous packets back. So let's say if there are congestion, like the three gray packets in the figure, in the downlink queue. So now the access point is the congestion point, and the congestion message, how would the sender knows the congestion message? For example, if there's fourth packet, like the blue one in the downlink queue, knows this one. Actually, can cannot tell the sender immediately because that packet is still stuck on the way. What happens in the real world is that this blue packet needs to go through the downlink queue and wireless links and be bounced back by the receiver finally reaches the sender. 
So where we call the blue one, we call this congestion control loop. And what's worse here is that we can see the Darling and virus links are actually redundant for the control loop. If we could somehow tell the sender immediately about the congestion information, we could then let the sender reduce the sender rate immediately to avoid the propagation of the long queuing delay. And what's still worse here is that when the delay increases, it is usually the queuing delay at the last mile access point and also the various links that dominates the end-to-end -end delay. So here we call it the control loop could also inflate in this case. And as we discussed before, the congestion control algorithm cannot really solve this problem itself because this problem happens in the network. From the center side, we have nothing to do besides just waiting for the signals. So the problem here is how we can let the centers know the signals earlier or faster. So now we go to our design Jugo, which is like a fortune teller to tell the pre prediction. I'm going to design in detail in the following slides. So if we could somehow let the center know the congestion, like in this figure, directly by bypassing all the redundant part going through the Darling queuing delay and the various link delays, we could then let the centers reduce the center rate very quickly and eliminate the inflated control loop. But how to do that? For example, can we design a new protocol for that? If we want to piggyback the information from the access point back to the sender, we actually need to modify both the access point and the sender to let this information understandable or decodable by the sender. This is very hard because the senders are usually maintained by the content providers like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and access points are usually maintained by the router vendors like Cisco, Netgear. If you want to, to put these two parties together to have such a protocol deployed to see the performance benefits, that would be like, very hard to deploy in practice. So we are therefore motivated to, motivated to modify only the routers, it's specifically only the last mile access point only, to see if we can solve this problem. But how to do that, considering there are so many like, existing protocols, existing applications, and the different congestion control algorithms, including TCP, Quick, and different CCS, as the previous presenter presents. So here, our solution goes into two folds. We again present this uh, from the view of the access point. The access point actually connects to the center via the internet and the receiver via the wireless link. So it's like a converter between the wireless link and the internet. So it's a fast, slow net conversion. So what is data pass here? So in the downlink direction, there's a downlink data pass from the sender to the receiver. There's also an uplink data pass from the receiver back to the sender, like the green one in this figure. So our solution goes to two folds. First, we can have a feedback, feedback updater for the protocols to somehow carry the information back to the existing protocols, like here, but in the reverse direction. And we also have a fortune teller for different congestion control algorithms to tell the updater what information to notify back to the sender. I'll go into details for these two modules in the later slides. So first, for the feedback updater, the key observation here is that we found they can be ca categorized into two types, namely auto-band feedback and in-band feedback. So auto-band feedback means that the feedback information is not contained in the payload of the feedback packet. For example, in TCP, the payload in TCP does not contain any information that is going to be processed by the sender. It is the sender that is receiving the ACK packets and matching the ACK numbers with the previous sequence numbers and know the, like the wrong ship time and any other network conditions. In contrast, for the inbound feedback, it's just like network conditions, like the intervals of the receiving packets or any other network conditions are in the payload of the feedback packet. So for the auto band feedback, our solution is to delay the X by carefully designed time intervals to carry this information back to the sender. In this way, we, can, we do not need to modify the sender, but just carry the information in the intervals of the ACK packets to be like, understandable by the sender. And for the email packet, we can just update or rewrite the payload in the feedback packets. So to be more specifically, to delay the X, this is actually the previous control loop if we result our solution. Like, it needs to go through the whole control loop mark in blue here to finally reach the uh, sender. But our observation here is that when there's one packet coming from the sender side, it usually happens to be any, some other packets comes from the receiver side, belongs to the same flow, arrives at the access point at the same time, but acknowledge the previous packets, like the packets with the smaller sequence numbers. So we could actually just modify the intervals between this packet, like in this case, delay the second packet, delay the second green packet, to let the senders know the delay in the network is actually increasing. So in this way, the senders now know that the delay is increasing. 
for the inbound feedback, we can just overwrite the received delta or what kind of like the specific fields in the specific like payload information. This is actually the transfer wide congestion control from the RTP RTCP protocol. So another important thing is that what information do we need to tell the sender or to make sure that the sender will reduce the sender rate because there are so many CCAs, protocols, and different things, and they rely on different signals like RTT, delay gradients, and delivery rates. So our observation here is that actually these congestion signals are processed from the package feedback timestamps. So what is timestamps here? For example, we calculate the delay by receiving, by matching the time of receiving the ACK packet with the time of like sending out the previous sequence number or the data packet. So the feedback time is actually useful to estimating in the RTT here. And also the delivery rate. Delivery rate is also calculated by the uh, number of packets sent in the previous time window. So here we define the feedback time from the view of the access point by the current time plus the queuing delay plus the transmission delay because we are already lost miles, so it's just audit. Maybe there are some like non transgenetic like delays, as we can said, but in this case, we do not consider that. Actually, we can see here from the last mile access point, the second and third part of the queuing delay and the transmission delay are actually predictable. For example, the queuing delay is just the queue size over the transmission rate. And transmission delay we can also get from like the underlying like uh, information from the access point. So here we said that one package should know its feedback time upon arrival. So finally, we go through the preliminary evaluation part of this work. So we first had an S3 simulation. We apply Google over WebRTC actually with the Google congestion control, which is also known as GCC here. We tested with five sets of different bandwidth traces here, including Wi-Fi, cellular, 4G, 5G, and the, like in restaurant office. And we also compare our solution with two baselines, namely FIFO and Kodo, which are two options in the Linux kernel. The metric here to measure is the network routing time. So now we present the result here. The x-axis is the different traces, including the wireless, cellular, and different scenarios. And the y-axis is the fraction of RTT over 200 milliseconds, which is actually the threshold recommended by ITO, about which like, the users will start to experience stutters. So as we can see here, like existing solutions are not very good at solving this problem because like there are even for Kodo, because the job package is earlier, but the delay basis is not that sensitive reactively to the delay signal, to the loss signals. In contrast, our solution could outperform the better of these solutions by half or even more. And we also have more evaluations on like how is DCP-based solutions, how the fairness, accuracy, things. We also deploy our solution with the OpenWT-based real wireless routers and we measure the performance and overhead. So please refer our papers for more details on the evaluation. So the key takeaway of this talk is that in the real-time communications, the inflated control loop affects the tail latency in wireless. And we can decouple the control loop from the data path to let the sender know the congestion earlier to make sure it can reduce the sender rate in a timely manner. We are trying to make sure, make sure our solution is deployable and generalizable for different protocols, applications, and CCAs. And for the evaluation performance, it, it does improve the performance by like 70% to maybe like name a few. So we are now in the process of pushing Juga to be deployed in the wild, like with some real products. So if you have any collaboration chances for the follow-up work, I'll be more than happy to have a chat. Thank you for listening and happy to take any questions. Thank you for your great talk. Um, so since you're delaying the acknowledgement, uh, and curr currently it uh, seems like you're, you're doing uh, one or two applications, but what will happen if you have a huge number of applications, and what is the effect on the packet drops due to the fact that now you're delaying X, and therefore the buffers on your uh, device is starting to fill up? Sorry to clarify, you mean the buffers on the routers? Like you said that you're delaying the acknowledgements back, right? Right, on the routers. Right. So once you're delaying that, it means that the packet, the acknowledge, spend more time on your uh, device. It means that if you have a burst from other devices, you will have start to, you'll start getting packet drops, meaning you will create a congestion that wasn't there before. 
Thank you. That's a very good question. Actually, in this work, we mainly focus on the last microservice point. So the delay happens on the reverse vector, so that it's the first mile of the other packets. So here, like for wireless routers, the buffer is usually much deeper than the ones in the core network. So in this case, it should be fine for like for home routers. There should be some package jobs in that case. We did not test that, to be honest. But I believe that in most cases, at least from what we test now, we do not observe like there are so much traffic in the uplink like from the view of the users because most traffic are coming from downlink and we delay whole packet, whole the packet packets in the uplink, which seems to be fine. So yeah, but that's a really good question. I guess we need to, maybe you can just try to uh, job that packet if you if you really want to not want to job packet in that case to affect other flows, we can just let the flow pass because as long as we delay a little, the senders will know if the delay is increasing and it will reduce the center rate. That should be fine. And also another number I want to share is that the delay is usually like capped by 10, 20 milliseconds, which is not very high compared to RTT and other like metrics in network. Thank you. Um, Andre Gurta, Flynn Shopping University. Actually, many applications may use proprietary protocols and um, encrypted traffic like HTTPS or SSL. So, how can you decode like TCP or TCP data in this case? Oh, thank you for your question. That's a very good question. Like, we, I'm trying to answer in, in these two ways. First, we are mainly focusing on the TCP traffic. We are like, it is decrypted, but it is decrypted like in TLS like layers. For the TCP ACK packets, we can actually read the X numbers and sequence numbers in the header, which is actually not uh, encrypted, uh, unless you use some IPsec or other techniques. So for TCP solutions, it should work well in most cases. And for UDP-based solutions like WebRTC or maybe other things, we currently fo focus on the unencrypted solutions. So for the encrypted ones, we are still working on that. I'm not sure if there are further solutions for that. We will be happy, will have, will happy to have a chat later. Anja Feldmann, did you try to actually compare the performance of your solution also to one where you decouple the two TCP control streams by basically terminating the TCP on the router and then having an independent stream for the all the way to the end host. Sorry, do you mean like the dual, dual control loops work in the like data center things? So instead of having one TCP flow end to end, right. have a decoupled TCP flows. Oh, like split TCP flows split in the several TCP. parts. I see. We we do now test that like during the evaluation part. I think that's a very good point because if we we can let the senders, whatever the sender is in the middle part of the end-to-end, -end, like using stability TCP or not, if we can let the intermediate node knows that the sender rate is reduced like earlier, similar back pressure mechanism could also tell the real like the content generator to have like faster reaction to the reduce sender rate. I'm not sure about like the bottleneck of this case if it's really the case or not, but Usually, like if you use the CV connection, for example, the proxy in data center and the, for the another connection for the wider network, the part in data center is not really the bottleneck. So I believe, like in most of cases, it should work. I'm not sure, like if there are other cases, like satellite network, where the other parts may be another bottleneck, how it works. Thank you. Okay, so there's thanks our speaker. Um,